This podcast contains adult language, descriptions of violence, sexual references, and other possibly offensive themes. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to this episode of Back to the Story, where friends come together to play Dungeons and Dragons. I'll be your DM, Klaus. Let's get started. Okay. If anyone can talk of Balgarth out of a fight, it's you. <laughs> if anyone can keep us alive, it's you. But if you ask me what my calling would be, I'd say that of a defender of my friends. You don't need to change anything. I would give my life to see them through. I finally only get into trouble when I'm around you, though. I never want to have that kind of power over somebody. She lands upon the deck, but just on her toes, like a dancer, like a ballet dancer as if the weight of sin has yet to fall on her shoulders. And the light of nature will be brought to them. We haven't done this before. Does that make us professional? That would make you amateurs at best. At best, I like that. I've had a hard time finding answers in my life. I'm glad I'm here too. Where are you from, Ezekiel? Wherever your wife goes when she dreams, and I'll walk away. Fuck you, and fuck your will. There's no redemption for the likes of you. You were never loved as a child. (sighs) How do you want this? On the exit out of Texas, I was like, what the fuck happened in Texas? I was worried. It's football. So, previously, the bronze scales make their way across the Sea of Storms, landing in a new land in a new harbor, Port Cacho. The scales secure drink and cots at the Casa Cabana before exploring into the city. Calvin, Amson, and Nelly found the book wagon, finding some stories and references as Ellery and Vesper shopped the market of foreign goods with Orizana, outfitting her with some armor and a bow. Ezekiel found new attunement to creatures of the sea before searching stories and finding a horse in Raz. On the way out the city, Vesper and Ellery reached out to entities beyond as Amson received a spectral tattoo and found a new story of the Amber Witch in her daydream bask. We come back to the story here. As the scales have gathered outside of the city, Orizana is mounted up on top of the red-brown horse, and you all begin the next leg of your journey to the distant city of Nymanet. You move north along the narrow trail, along the Salamis coasts and isles, with forests to your right, of willow trees and the salty ocean and marsh to your left. You have left probably around noon. Exiting the city took longer than expected, and you're under the high noon sun as you walk along the trails. Sorry, sorry, what time is it? It's about noon. All right. (laughs) So the, you can smell the marsh, the salt, um, and that thick smell that hangs in the air. You can see the vines almost seeming to react to the salt upon the trees, but still they try to bloom showing you that it is indeed spring, trying to press through the winter. You guys travel along. You can see the seahawks circling overhead, diving into the ocean every now and then. Sometimes they'll come up with fish, sometimes not. You see beds of oysters intermittently within the marsh to the left. The weather is warm. The winds blow through like the breath of some beast, reminding you of Severwind. You come... To a part where the land seems to dip down, and you see rocks stacked. Clearly a trail marker. And this trail is not a paved road, but it does seem to be a fairly well-traversed small trail. You see the markers. Um, as it dips down, you see the sea is low, kind of revealing this trail where you can cross ahead. As you begin to enter into it, you feel the marsh is thick and sort of... Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Every now and then a boot gets stuck and you have to tug someone free as you begin to push forward, continuing along. The insects buzz around your faces and ears. Um, You swat them away as best you can. The wind helps to some degree. As you come up the other side and continue on for the next hour or so, um, who is leading up on the trail? We'll say who, what two people are leading. I would like to be one of them. Okay. I could help Ezekiel since I've got the original kind of map, I guess. Yeah, you have the... We're following your route. I didn't come this way, but I can at least... 
Yeah. Guide. We'll we'll say it this way. Everyone go ahead and give me a perception check. Just everybody. Aye, aye, Captain. Ooh, natural 20. So 27 for Ezekiel? 13, not that it matters. Ezekiel got a nat 20. Also 13. 16. 11. Okay. So as you guys are traveling ahead, you've kind of come out of that low marshland, and you can still see the marsh to your left, but you sort of hit more solid ground. Um, There's a bit more trees here, these willow trees that hang down, vines hanging off of them. With small blooms, they're just starting to press out. You can just barely make out color beginning to form. And as you're moving along, Ezekiel, you hear this first. You hear the waves just sort of (laughs) coming in and out. Masking most sounds, but Ezekiel, you hear a distinct (coughs) cough forward and to the left. You can see ahead there is a large boulder and a dying tree kind of still standing next to it. Beyond that, there's another stump ahead and to the left where you heard the cough from. As you kind of put your hand up and bring everyone to a halt, all of you hear this coughing as it goes off again. (coughs) You don't see the individual, though. And Ezekiel, as you scan, you see movement to the right as well, ahead. So you heard, you all heard something to the left, a cough, and then to the right, ahead. At about the same distance, Ezekiel alone sees a bit of movement. I think we have a lot of company. And I'm going to cast Long Strider on Ball. Okay. Placing your hand on him, the wind is sort of envelops and begins wrapping around his feet. Uh, Ball will take you and cast a jump on himself as well. Okay. The energy surges through your legs. And I think with that, Ball will draw his blade and uh, kind of get on into like a defensive stance and start to kind of see if he okay. can suss out where the sounds are coming from. So as Ball begins to withdraw his blade, everyone go ahead and roll initiative for me. Oh. That's what's going to start it off here. Hey. Wow. I rolled the same thing for stealth as I did for initiative. That's amazing. <laughs> a natural one and then some other number that I'm not going to tell you. And I can tell it's been a while for combat because I literally just wrote down the numbers with no letters or anything <laughs> inside them. <laughs> oh, Could yeah, I have... Got a... I was just making sure I had it prepared. Could I have cast a spell when Ezekiel mentioned that we had company? Uh, what were you casting? I was just going to cast aid on um, our three tanks so that you should get an extra five. Hit points. Yeah. 23. Jesus Christ, you're all crazy good. Ellery, you're first with Vesper on deck. So, Ellery, you hear a cough ahead into your left. You currently see nothing. If you're all looking at the map, I'm about to ping where that is. It's next to the stump. So, that's where you hear the cough from. Okay, so my main concern is protecting Orizana. So, I want to. And if we'll say I can... she's not on the map. She's just behind y'all on the horse. Okay. So I'm just going to say stay back to her. And I'd like to move a little bit over to the side. To so Ozona slows down her horse and just kind of is held back 10 or 15 feet or so back from y'all. And I'm going to move to the side about 25 feet, I guess. I still don't see anything, so I am going to ready a firebolt for the first hint of any attack. Okay, so you just hold up flames in your hands. Vesper, do you hear a cough in front of you? Yeah. I will skirt this way. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. All right, well, shit. Right in that box, I'm going to cast a spiritual weapon. And that's all I can really do. I'm going to hold a sacred flame until I see someone with my action. Okay, so this uh, ethereal spectral bow appears in front of you holding a spell in your hand. Uh, That'll bring us up to this guy. You, Ezekiel was the only one that saw this movement before, but now the rest of you see movement as this person pops out. This can be a disadvantage, but currently 
Cal, he had hidden against everyone, but Ezekiel. So he's going to shoot towards Calvin straight. Forward. As Ezekiel, you see the movement confirmed as a shorter statured humanoid wearing shambles of clothes, like a, a loincloth has tattoos over their body, tan golden skin, wild hair, steps up quickly, releases a arrow. Ding. Calvin, you notice that something tings off of your armor, uh, not penetrating further. Um, and then the person steps back and uh, brings up Amson. Uh, I would like to let loose my firebolt because I can barely see that guy. Okay, let me see. If you yeah. click Ellery, you should be able to see what she sees with control L, I think. Oh my god, can I? Holy shit, that's amazing. Okay, so he has some cover, but because of your smell sniper, you can straight roll. Okay. Wow, I can't math right now. Uh, 19. Yeah, that is. Okay. For four points of fire damage. Okay, so you, you see this person step back. You slam the fire. It slams into the willow tree next to him, and the flame's going to wrap around the bark. Some of it still scars him, but he manages to spin about, um, mitigating some of the flames at least. But he does take some of it. Uh, Amson. All right. I'll take just... A few steps to my right, kind of in between Melly and Ellery, and I am going to use my bonus action to inspire, let's say, Calvin, and I'm going to sing to Calvin, he's got a heart of gold, he never let me down, cause he's a man who's always protecting, he's always coming round. I know his heart is true, cause he's always here for me and you. He's got his mind made up, he's got that holy touch, he's gonna run to you. So that is a D8 for Calvin. And then, yeah, I'll hold Firebolt as well, until I can see somebody clearly. Sure. So, Ball, that brings us to you. You all at this point saw the other individual pop out from behind the tree before going back again. So I'm going to use my action to dash. And I think basically where I want to get is to here. And I'm hoping that since I have jump on me, maybe I can combine jump to get over, jump over some of the terrain. Yeah, give me an athletics check. All right. Uh, 14. Okay. Yeah, the, the boulder isn't too big, especially since you're skirting the north edge of it, or the east edge of it, um, as you leap over, shaking the ground. Several branches and loose things could fall from the trees around you as you land there. All right, I don't think I can get any closer to that tree, so basically the motion is just, it looks like Ball's trying to get behind the tree for cover. Okay. And it's mid-motion as this turn ends. Okay, so beginning your next step um, as Ezekiel. Okay. Ezekiel is going to sing right where I am. I'm going to get myself, Calvin, Vesper, Ellery, and Amson with a third level bless. Everybody's blessed, except for Ball. Sorry, Ball. And then I will uh, pop into direwolf form. Yawning, popping into direwolf form. No <laughs> <Sorry>. big deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this tree and rock? Can I skirt between them? Like right over here ish? Can I go between that or over it? Yeah, without issue. Do you just run forward? Yeah, I'm just trying to run forward. Okay. So the second you get right here, this direwolf, <laughs> your front right paw falls through false ground. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw in your direwolf form. I'm super good at that. Where's my direwolf sheet? It's better than I am in my normal form, though. Nine! So as your right paw falls through, there's a snap and a strain as your front paw kind of twist, um, as if you would twist an angle. Ankle. You can pull it out fine. There's no traps, no spikes. But for the remainder of your turn, your movement is halved. Okay, so that's five, ten, fifteen. And I can only get one more step. Oh no, I get 25 because Direwolf has 50 feet. I thought it was 40. So one more. Okay, so pulling it out, continuing forward as best you can. Anything else for Ezekiel? Nope, nope, that's it. Okay. 
that will bring us up to Ezekiel or to Calvin. You've been blessed. You've been inspired. And I can only kind of see one person, uh, and everybody else is still here. But I don't know who else is attacking us. Oh, I'll, I'll ping. So you definitely saw the person that popped out. Everyone, mm-hmm. did. I still see behind them. that tree. And then by this stump, y'all heard a cough. You've yet to see someone over there, but you heard a cough distinctly over here. Right. And as my dilemma is, I don't want to uh, rush away from my squishies uh, only for somebody else to pop out. I like that weighing the calling and glory. The shield versus the spear. Yeah, it's it's difficult. Uh, Realistically, they are super far away anyway, so I am going to... I'm just going to do this. I'm going to move off to the left. Roughly there. And as Calvin, as you move down there, I can say from that angle, you can actually see someone. They're like laid down back against the, the fallen log, and they're like scrambling, trying to get to their feet, grabbing at their bow. They drop their quiver of arrows. But you see another tan skin uh, individual with lots of black tribal tattoos all over their back, shoulders, and even face. Roughly at the stump? Yeah, roughly at the stump. Like okay. in exactly that square. And they're kind of prone, technically, because they haven't st- stood up yet. Well, then I'm definitely not going to do that. I am just going to rush forward some more. Calvin rushes in. I will rush towards the okay. dude and just our matey. And you can see this person is like now seeing you, noticing that you've seen him, is now freaking out more. And is like struggling to quickly get an arrow out, notch it, and stand up. And is going to try to fire at you. No. So the arrow looses and he's off balance as he's just standing up in the air. Hard left and high over your head and sails off into the willow branches behind you. Um, And that brings us back up to Ellery. Uh, From where I am, can I see that one? I think the dire wolf is actually blocking your line of sight as well. Just barely. Uh, Let me see. Ashley, you have a small line of sight on that person. Okay. The small corner. You see, like, his their left shoulder and part of their hair flying around, and that's it. So, I'm going to move a bit anyway, because I can't really see the other one. I, I, I'm going to try and hit this one from where I am now. So you, you have the boulder now, but you still can see part of them. Like, you see sh- clavicle up at this point. But with your if, sniper, it doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. Else, it would be a problem, but not for other. Yeah, I'm going to try another firebolt this time. Uh, it's 18 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Yeah. You conjure the flames, releasing it, <laughs> swirling through like a flaming spear, slamming it. <laughs> Four. Oh, wow. Okay, for 18 points of fire damage. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> he slams that rocket's back as you see the flame roll over, catching some of his hair, burning it almost instantly, some of it up. Severe um, burns on their chest and left arm. And then from there, I'm going to move... I'm going to move another 15 feet to see if I can see the other guy. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, Vesper, as you see the flames roll through, slamming into this person, you can see the dire wolf that got stuck, but is now beginning the charge once again. Okay. Like um, Ten. I'm going to start running up uh, kind of at a diagonal. I'm going to go 15, 15, 20, 25, 30, press myself up against this rock. And um, it's about, you're taller, so it's about up to, like, the top of your diaphragm. Okay, cool. That's perfect. I'm going to... Oh, am I close enough to this person? <gasps> I am. I'm going to release that sacred flame I was holding. Is that a deck save for them? That is a deck save on okay. there. And is that like a pillar of light from the sky? What does that look yes. like? <laughs> uh, yes. Actual 20 like, on the deck save, though. God damn it. it comes down. They're still reeling from the flames, and they use that as they see the light and just continue the momentum and the pain. You can see their face snarling from the smell of their own burning flesh as they spin away from the radiant flames. With my bonus action, I will move the bow up there and try and attack. 
this poor person should not never have coughed on your watch. Nope, nope, that's a ten. So, <laughs> oh wait, 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 I get a D four to attack rolls, right? Because of aid. Uh, yeah. Or bless. Yeah. Mm. Fourteen. Mm, just barely misses. <gasps> okay. Zero. Yeah, it strikes just at his feet. That will bring us up to this guy. You're here, Shelafas Doslis, calling out to the other one. Um, does anyone speak Sylvan? I do. Ezekiel, you you, see, you hear fucking run from this one, <laughs> and he he just takes off five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty, and then continues to dash off map. Uh, that brings us up to Anson. So you are holding the spell in your hands, prepared. As one of them, you can hear just running through the grass, the sound dissipating as they gain distance. Okay, so I'm going to run kind of around this tree stump that's near me towards Ellery. Can I see that person way off in the distance that was hiding now? Um, they're standing up. They have a solid three quarters cover, but you can't see like the top of their head just past the spectral bow. Okay, well, I'll try this anyways. I'm going to use Firebolt and see if I hit. Okay. <laughs> Slinging these flames as they roll through the air. Natural 20. Yeah, you hit. Alright, and this is a cantrip as I finally get to use a wizard spell. And that was pretty terrible. That was four points of fire damage. Even with a crit? Oh yeah, that's right. That's a, that's another five, so that's nine fire damage nine. on a crit. Nine. Okay. And is this the first time you've cast this spell? This is the first time that I've cast this spell. What is it? Is it like a flaming spear or like a ray? What does it look like? Uh, I'm going to say that Amson, uh, using these newfound powers that he finally understands, conjures up a very unstable ball of fire in his hand that he like chucks like a baseball. And it totally like spins through the air and then just barely catches them. Okay, so this... Marble or baseball sized sphere just slings through the air, curving around just barely going over the boulder, just barely missing the dead tree, and then just barely goes over the stump. He's further hidden behind, slamming into the middle of his chest, bursting into flames. Amson's going to go, <laughs> okay. yes, and then that's his turn. Awesome. So, Ball, you hear the ch 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 ch, and you kind of lean around the tree as you see the one that was hiding behind that tree you were jumping towards is just running from you as the other one's just being pummeled. I don't think I'm going to catch up to the other one. I think I'll just... Uh, I, all I see is the two of them, right? Um, is there any sign of any others? As far as you can tell, no. And really, the one in front of you, you can't fully see, but you can definitely hear them running away from me. They're not stealthing. The other one is the only one you can really see, about half cover. But I think I will use uh, my, act like, my action to dash and try to jump over this log and kind of basically flank him to get to sure. you. Yeah, and that log isn't huge, and with your size, you can easily do, do, do. Slamming down as the grass kind of ripples and the sand and marsh kind of as wind pushes it away in a shockwave. Coming up behind them, up close, you can tell this is a golden elf of some sort, but looks more feral, more wild than the ones you saw in Port Coucher. Black tribal tattoos all over their shoulders and chest, even on their face. Uh, swirling. Their ears appear longer um, and curve back further. Wild dreadlock hair, though now most of it's burnt, and the, as well as the half chest um, is burnt. This person is wide-eyed in the fear as you slam down there. And then uh, I guess now that I've kind of gotten flanked, I'm going to look at him and say, uh, I wouldn't run if I were you. Put your weapons down. Ball roars this in his deep, giant voice, and the person just looks freaked out and confused. And that'll be the end of my turn. I'm going to send you a quick message. Okay. And that will bring us to Ezekiel in dire form. Well, I'm the only one that understood them, but I cannot speak. I'm going to hope my friends don't kill him, and I'm going to go run after the other one. With a dash, I can get 100 feet, so I can't probably catch up this round, but within one or two, I should be able to get to him. Yeah, okay. So you begin catching up as you kind of curve around the tree he was hiding behind, and you can see he's probably within maybe 30, 35 feet. Or maybe a little closer, actually, if you're dashing. As you're quickly... As you see him... He looks over your shoulder, over his shoulders and he just... And just continues to run. And he suddenly takes a hard left. 
running, beginning to turn, going straight towards the marsh and the ocean. And that will bring us up to Calvin. Calvin will move up to Mr. Man and kind of approach him defensively, warily, and just kind of gesture to get his hands down and, I don't know, start, what, what's going on? Why are y'all attacking us? What, what are you doing here? I don't, I'm, I'm Calvin, son of Klein. I'm from a farm on Ember Shore. Who are you? So Calvin, you rush up to him with your spear out, now flanking between a giant and then this heavily armored half-orc with a shield and spear, and then some weird spectral bow saying that to him as well. He's freaking out wide-eyed, um, and he looks at you as you're yelling at him, and he just looks terrified. He begins to back up, but then runs into Ball behind him, and he kind of jumps. <gasps> and turns, like, head dashing all around, wondering what to do. He doesn't seem to understand you. And Calvin, you would, as you run up there, you would probably recognize, like, he's confused, in fear, doesn't seem to understand enough to respond. Calvin will kind of point at his bow with the spear and point to the ground. Okay. I'll say you can use your action to make an intimidation check. I will do so. Well, that didn't go well. I don't, I mean, sure, fuck it. I don't know how much good that's going to do. What is your roll? I rolled, now it is a, I don't know if I add anything to it, because I should be intimidating. Oh, I have. I think half work hit with it. Yeah. And you're crazy 17. Enough, now it's a 17. It was a 2. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. So as you as you run up, and his turn is actually next, and run up, point at him with a spear. Before you even really point to the ground, the he's already dropping the bow as it falls to the ground. His hands are up. At this point, Ezekiel, you're... And you can, at this point, catch up to them. You're 15, 10, 5 feet behind him. Uh, I actually want to run past him, spin around, drop form, and entangle. Okay, so he takes a hard left, trying to make it to the water before you're able to do so. You run past him, turn, spinning back into form, effortlessly, like pivoting in direwolf form, turning into your ASMR form. And is that a strength save? Strength save. That's not great. I don't think that's going to be your DC. Yeah, that's nine plus something. Nine plus like one. Nine minus one. Uh, no, that will that will not make it. Sorry, nobody's blessed anymore, but I figured they didn't need it. Yeah, so he's turning, trying to get to the water, and before he's able to get to it, <laughs> roots and vines come up from the ground, grabbing onto his legs, pulling him, uh, preventing him from moving. He's trying to pull out of it, uh, but is currently stuck. And in Sylvan, I'll say, Hi there, friend. I think we got off to the wrong foot. They look at you surprised um, that you speak their language. Fuck off. Get me out of this. I mean, I could go back to what I was and just eat you, or maybe we could have a chat. You're the same. Same as what? You forget what we are. We'll show you. Do what you must. All right, then. And I will take out my rope, and while he's still entangled, kind of tie on top of him, um, and then I'm going to drag him back. So Ezekiel throws the rope over him, begins to tie him up as he's unable to really do much at this point, being entangled by vines, roots, and now rope. So you're in the process of tying him up as we flash back to the other crew as this other one is hands up looking at Calvin, like seemingly more afraid of Calvin than the giant behind him. Uh, Calvin will take a more at ease posture and... I guess, uh, scream out to his other friends, Hey, everybody, uh, I don't see any other threats. Maybe we can get this one to talk, or somebody else can talk. I, he, he, I don't understand what he says. Does he speak Elvish? I will try to say something to him in Elvish. He says, Hi, I'm, so, I'm Calvin, son of Klein. I come from Embershore. And Calvin, look, do you speak Elvish? Do you speak Elvish? Yeah. Okay. He looks at you and he's... Fear. Fire. 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 He tries to say the open word for fire. Like, he understands some something of what you say, but not enough. No. I don't think... I don't think he speaks Elvish. As the rest of you are kind of heading over, Ball and Calvin, give me an inside check. 
as you are the closest two to them as the rest are heading over there. 17. I rolled something. Uh, it's currently a 21. I'm trying to see if I have to add something to it. You rolled oh. a 21? Uh-huh. Jesus. Oh, yeah, 21. 21's where it's going to stand. These okay. d20s are getting larger and larger. They are. Intriguing. <laughs> but both of you will actually notice his eyes are darting towards the water. Oh, yeah. When I move around, I want to get between him and the water. So as the rest of you are coming close, Calvin and Ball, you all see this before the rest of them get there. And you see he's about, he's half a heartbeat from taking a hard left foot into the ground and sprinting towards there. You have half a moment to react. Oh, uh, Calvin. Okay. Yeah, ditto. Okay. Grapple, both, grapple. Both of you are roll grapple to X. 18. Okay. Yeah. And Calvin? Uh, I think it's a 17. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So I rolled, I rolled twice for both of you. So he immediately jumps up and you'll both grab one arm and then the other arm and then just pull him back. To his I like the picture. Loop. As he jumps up, like Ball just kind of grabs his leg and then just kind of picks him up by the leg. So he's like upside down hanging. Okay. Sure. Yeah. You grab him by the leg, holding him upside down like some sort of weird fish as Calvin grabs the arm and is holding it, stretching out as the rest of the crew over there kind of pull around, blocking his uh, exit towards the waters. And at this point, Ezekiel, you've wrapped this person up. They're fighting the whole time, but between the entangle and the rope, you're able to get them tied up and are dragging them back, um, gathering out about uh, back together. All right. So I'll just drag him along until I'm back with the group. Then I'll address both of them. Now, why don't we talk like civilized people for just a minute so we can understand what's going on, and then perhaps we'll release you without any further harm. The one that you're dragging is, like, occasionally fighting. As you can see, the other one is basically given up, is not fighting anymore, is basically going limp. The one that you have is struggling, but is not able to get much. And he try he like spits in your general direction. It doesn't get far. It kind of slops on his chin. Now, gentlemen, perhaps we can have a discussion civilized, as I wipe the spit from my chin, about why exactly you are attacking passers by on the road. The one that's given up says, just, just let us go. And as the other one cuts in, you come into our land, you trespass upon our shores, and then you have the audacity to try us. And he's just, you see he's frustrated and is just cursing now on Sylvan. Paul's going to interrupt and and come and say uh, we were simply passing through. First of all, this is not your land. It has always been ours. Ezekiel pops the wings out, eyes glowing. This land does not belong to anyone. And if anyone has claim, I have been here my whole life as well. So watch your mouth, boy, or I will bring some wrath upon you. Give me intimidation check at advantage, as he sees his other friend already broken between the hulking, armored half-orc, the rest of you, and a literal giant. So, 17. You see, this one has been hard to break almost zealous, willing to die. And when the wings come out, your eyes glow. Their eyes dilate, widen in fear. You can see them trying to fight back the fear, trying to swallow it, but you can tell they're frightened. He just kind of sulks back, stops struggling for a minute. Now, why are you attacking people traveling? Just protecting your territory, as you so deem it to be? The one that you were focusing on with your wings and eyes is kind of semi-despondent for the moment. Uh, the other one kind of speaks up. This is our land. Land was taken from us. We fight to keep what we have left. From the Lunari, the Vumari before them, are our ancestors. This is why we fight. Will there be others on this path? The despondent one pipes up again, still frightened, but sticking their chin out as best they can against it. There are many more of us. Along the Salamis Isles, the pillars of Boimus guide us. You will not walk freely in our lands. Kill us if you must. 
All right, I will look to everybody else, roughly translate what they've been saying. This doesn't bull me. What do you think we should do? Calvin, Calvin. Ah, uh, what? Oh, yeah, that's that's probably the best course of action. I do believe. Thank you. Anyway, anyone else have any wonderful insight? They don't look very harmful. Why don't we just continue through? Well, if we let them go, they can tell the people what we've said. Hopefully they will. If not, then I guess we deal with it as it comes. Perhaps they can guide us around the edge of their land. That way we're not trespassing, and there's no reason to kill us in That's exchange for their idea. lives. I'll take out my map and hold it in front of them. Now, if we wanted to not travel through your lands, where could we go to lead us here somewhat along this path? Is there a way we can avoid your people and offending you for this? Are you who you, are you holding out to one in particular, or are they both placed I'm like, next to each just other? like holding it between waiting for one of them to respond. Okay. All of it. The Verdana will. And as he begins to go on another diatribe about the Verdana and the ancestors of the Vumeri and ancient glories of his people, the other one, the Verdana, our land was all. Do you let him point with his hand? This is the not aggressive one? This is the one that yeah. seems broken. Okay. It's my map. He's going to die. But He points and gestures to the entirety of the Aino. This was once all. Belong to the Vomari. Now the Vidana are here. But all is our land. Even the Lomari, they will pay for what they have done. They have lost their way. There cannot be any concessions. As he looks up, almost sad about that. That he cannot make it an agreement. It has to be all or nothing. Do any of the the terms he's using ring any bells to me? The Volmeri, the Glumeri? Uh, yeah. Do you have history as a skill, Ezekiel? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, what's your intelligence score or modifier? Ten, so zero. Ten. Okay. You're from the area. You're not studied in the people, but you're from the area. So the... Loon Mary Would I at is... least know different groups of elves? Yes. Maybe not their proper names, but I can kind of guess. Yeah, yeah, you you do know most of them, actually. So the Loon Mary are the High Elves of Asmazaros. They are one of the most powerful factions in the Aino. Um, incredibly powerful, mostly in magic. Their actual city of Asmazaros is hidden away. People know a general location of where it is, but finding the exact city is incredibly difficult. The Selamary that they mentioned are wood elves of the trees, content with their lives. The Verdana are these golden elves along the coast. And he mentioned the Vumeri, and though you're not as familiar with that term, you think from context clues it must be the ancient elves that settled this land before any of the factions. The Vumeri no longer exist, as far as you know. Do you have some idea of the factions within? All right, I'll uh, reiterate what my vague memories from lessons I did not pay attention to are, and it doesn't seem like we're going to have quite so easy a time. We should probably just keep an eye out for more of them. Is there any way we can barter passage? I can't imagine with these two. Uh, Ball will speak up and say, uh, I guess to this golden elf friend of us and say, uh, what will it take to let us through in common? I'll translate for him. Why won't you answer me? The one that is not quite broken still spits out. Trying to yell as best as he can, you can tighten the rope to silence him as best as you can. But he continues to say, We would never let you take our lands. This is our place. It belongs to us. We will fight. We will fight with arrow and javelin. And just continues until someone silences him. The other one, almost in mourning in his tone, kind of shakes his head. He is right. There can be no compromise. For what the world took from us, we will have it back. There is no price to great. We weren't the ones who took anything from you. We're just travelers. And yet you are here. You can see even this one is like 
trying to stifle anger. There's some historical anger that uh, isn't your fault, yet they're angry at you for it. All right, well, I'm satisfied. Strip him down and let him go. Do you do so? I guess Calvin starts mm-hmm. taking off his whatever. Okay. Pulls out a knife and starts unloosening his belt. Okay. Taking his pants. And... They don't have much in the way of, of clothes, but you can cut off what little they do have. Definitely removing any weapons, I assume, prior to cutting them free. Calvin, I sort of just meant to disarm them, but, you know, naked is symbolic. I believe there is a lesson here. You shall return to nature as you were born to it, and remember that you own none of this and nothing. And I'll rip up their clothes some more. Okay. And they didn't have much anyway. It was mostly shorts and loincloth-esque sash around their waist. They didn't have much in the first place. You remove their weapons and then their clothes, letting them stand up. They surprisingly stand unashamed. They may be used to this. Um, They aren't bothered by it. But Ezekiel, as you continue on probing them that this isn't their land, one of them, the one that's broken, sprints off into the water, (laughs) into the marsh, disappears between the surface. You don't see him come up for air again. The other one clenches his teeth and runs towards you, Ezekiel, to try and punch you. Uh, Uh, Can I interpose with my shield? Yeah. Just just for flavor, mostly, just to be like, have him hit the shield, maybe a spike in it. Yeah, absolutely. And so where it would have maybe hit Ezekiel and brushed off his shoulder, you slam your shield into his arm and you hear a crack as you may have shattered his part of his forearm. And he tries to grab Ezekiel and is just trying to bite and fight and claw with what I'm going to toll the dead on him. Okay. Just uh-huh. a wisdom save. You see the bit of wounds he has begin to open up and tear open. He can't hit take but maybe one more attack or wound. As he struggles to try, he's falling down on his knees trying to grapple at as he heals waist, but being unable to do so. I think uh, Ball will look to Vesper and say, that's enough. They are small, weak, yes, angry, but we don't need to kill them. I didn't intend to kill him, just weaken him. He gets up and kind of pushes off Ezekiel as best he can, pushing him back more than Ezekiel moves. And just kind of in frustrated frustration kind of looks around before limping off into the water, wading in and below the water. Doesn't come up for air. A few moments pass of quietness. No more arrows, no more sounds besides the waves rolling in through the marsh, the smell, the insects, the seahawks every once in a while. Is, uh, is it lunchtime yet? <sighs> yes, Calvin, I believe it is. I suppose this is as good a place as any. Yeah, well, might as well stop before we get into the next ambush. Great. Uh, anyone hurt? No. I think they Are shot y'all taking one a short rest? Arrow. Was Calvin hurt? I thought somebody got hit. I mean, I think they pinged off my armor. Okay. If nobody's hurt, then I'll worry about it. Yeah, I think we're, we're actually good. Yeah, we can take our midday rest. I kind of spent a lot on that fight unnecessarily. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> I love that y'all heard a call and just went into kill mode. <laughs> I was assuming like we were going to talk, and then the one fired, and I was like, okay, I guess this is on. Surely they wouldn't be that stupid to fire on this group if they didn't know. <laughs> No, nope. he's a giant. <laughs> like we ha- we're yeah, all we have really a- tall, except for Ellery. We like have- we're all really tall. Just spooky. We like we're armed to the teeth. Like we don't look like a group you fuck with. If someone's gonna fire at us, I assume it's on. <laughs> <laughs> no, just crazies. So, did you? Are you all taking a short rest or not? It no would help hurt. I don't yeah, but it. you can. I think the plan. I think we're trying to sit down and have our lunch. Is that the idea? Yeah, whatever, whatever. I, oh, I don't. I think I'm the only one that would get anything by it, and I don't need it. I did so. spend an inspiration, so it'd be nice to get that back. But yeah, whatever. Let's let's rest and be super buffed. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna take the hour, or be ready for them to come back with reinforcements. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you guys take an hour 
eat some lunch, whether that is uh, rations or you can try to find some local, local food. There seems to be an oyster bed. Um, but you basically rest up, eat up a little bit, brush off the dirt since you don't have any real wounds, and begin to set out again. While we're eating up and resting up, I'm going to uh, see if I can pull a seagull aside for a sec and just ask him, uh, did, did you know them? Why did they only speak with you? It's an old language. Uh, I believe it originated in the Feywild. Uh, a number of my order speak it. But elves, it's sort of the older language. These people don't didn't seem like they came out in the modern society. They believe in ancient rats and ownership of this land. So I, I, I just don't think they they knew what you were saying. What do you mean by old language? I I understood them perfectly. Um I'm sorry? As I understood you, yes, maybe was a thicker accent, but... Uh, I continue... Uh, I'm just going to switch to Celestial in this conversation, but not let Ball know. Really, that's interesting. Uh, I'm curious when... Did you notice Calvin trying to speak to him in Elvish as well? See, now that is a language I don't understand. All right. So... Just making sure you suddenly didn't understand everything, but you switching back to Sylvan, do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, ball nods. Did anyone teach you this? Teaching you what? It just seems normal. Uh, well, uh, Ball, I'm, I'm not sure what to tell you, but I'm, I'm not currently speaking the common tongue. Some language known as, uh, I believe, Sylvan is the common word for it. Uh, Ball's just going to kind of look at you a little confused. Ball, where do you come from? <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't got most of your story from your friends. I know you all came, grew up in Embishaw, but you're different than the rest of them, right? Yes, I, I was found a long time ago. Don't exactly know where I was, where I, where I came from. Hmm. I see. It's good that you found a family. I don't think many who get lost like you did are so quite so lucky. Especially not a family that seems to care about you as much as they do. I don't know why you know this language, Ball, but if you want to find out, I'm sure we'll, I'm certainly down to help and I'm sure everybody else would be just delighted. You see, uh, Ball just kind of, um, like, nods. Like, you know, that's one of those things where he, like, he keeps nodding like he likes the plan as he, uh, uh, continues finishing his lunch. I think I'll like that. We'll look into it. So after an hour or so of eating lunch, you'll get your fill, pack back up, and continue along the trail. Speaking of languages, and this is going to be something that I think Ellery will do throughout this journey. Um, anytime that the group is having a conversation, Ellery's going to do her best to translate for Orizana and maybe try and teach her a few words in common as we go. Okay. She seems receptive and is beginning to understand at least names and some basic terminology. Continuing. Backing back up and continuing along the trail, you travel for a couple more hours, keeping your eyes out. Uh, everyone, go ahead and give me a perception checks. One more time. Natural twenty for all. Twenty-two for Ezekiel. Nine. That's a five. A big juicy five. Natural, if you're curious. Just natural five. Five, okay. eight, I feel nine, better about my nine, nine now. <laughs> okay. So you guys continuing along the trail. You notice now the marsh seems to expand. Solid ground begins to dwindle along this trail. You can still see markings every now and then just simple stack, stacked stones uh, along the trail. And it comes to an area where it looks like there is a pretty thick oyster bed. There are some rocks that either they've been placed that way on purpose or 
they've maybe been moved that are sort of stepping stones um, that you might be able to jump from stone to stone to cross this oyster bed without having to walk along these sharp oysters. You can see the oyster bed kind of expands inland too through like a marshy creek. Do you guys continue trying to jump along the stones or do you just walk across? Do you try to find another Not way around? Course. Yeah, the, the the horse I don't think is going to do that very well. Can Ball lift a horse? Uh, it's a heavy animal. I'm not sure if you can. What's your strength score? Um, it's 16. 16. I think Calvin's actually the strongest. Yeah, all. I think Calvin might be stronger, but I don't know if there's like a, you can only pick up something a certain, like within your size range. With, with either one of y'all, it's going to be, I mean, both of y'all together could try if y'all wanted to. How much does a horse uh, weigh? Uh, does it look like it's going to be hard to find a way around this? I mean, from where you are, it's it's hard to tell. You can go inland more and see if you can maybe find a easier way to cross. But from where you're standing, it's hard to know. It doesn't look incredibly difficult. Unrelated, do we want to take some of these oysters for food later? Put them in Calvin's cold bag? Find pearls, maybe? Finally. <laughs> well, I have a bad feeling about trying to get Raz across this, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to just walk straight through without hurting himself either. Do I have any tricks prepared? Well, I mean, we could try and have Ball or Calvin carry him across, maybe the two of them. I can try and calm him down. I don't know that that's going to work. I don't think horses are used to being hoisted. I mean, I'd love to watch them try, but maybe we should just go around. Anyone have a problem with going around? We have to go into the marsh. All right, we look for another way around. Okay. Who's ever helming that? Give me a survival check. You want me to do that, guys? And can I yeah. help out by using my lodestone just to make sure we know which direction we're heading? Um, I'll say it's if someone has survival, you can help. Because it's less about knowing which way is north and more about looking for okay. changes in the geography. I have survival, but no one else does. Okay. So Calvin... Uh, and Ezekiel kind of head up a, a little ways away, just kind of surveying the land um, as it changes. Sixteen. Sixteen, okay. Um, so you continue, you actually turn sort of east. Um, the creek continues sort of to the east, widening a bit. As you see on the other side of that oyster bed, appears to be an island, actually, and not a continuation of the land itself. But as that creek over the next hour, two hours pass, you can see it begins to wide, uh, widen a bit, um, and the oyster beds seem to, if there are some, they're going to be beneath the water. This gets deep enough to where you can probably swim over without having to actually step on any sort of sharp shales or anything like that. It's maybe four or so in the afternoon. Bit of a detail, but let's swim across. Go. So you guys get into the water. It's murky and has that strong salt smell as you get in. But you swim through. Getting to the other side, trudging into the mud, digging in, uh, stepping to the other side. A few of you go first. Um, Orzon on the horse, gets off the horse and actually lets the horse kind of... Raz gets to the other side with Orzon and the rest of you follow behind. No real issue. You cross to the other side um, of the land. No trail inside anymore, but you know a general sense of where you're going. I'll lead on. Okay. So heading further um, in, trying to find that trail again, kind of heading northwest, hoping to run into it again. You continue to move. You can see this island has dips where there are pools of water. You see lilies that kind of come out of it. You see these large willow trees that hang over these vines kind of tangled within the limbs and boughs themselves. Um, as you move through, you see an occasional boulder or two here, stumps filled with dark, murky water. Continue that, you guys look and see what it looks like after a couple hours. The sun begins to set. You probably have an hour or so before sun sets. 
as you see it opening up again, a clearing through the trees, as you come to what looks like the edge of this island with a bridge leading to the next. You see a creek similar to the one you crossed before, though a little more narrow, with a bridge spanning over the edge. Is there any dry spot under the bridge? The bridge goes over water, so no. Mm, okay. Just see. What kind of condition does the bridge look uh, look to be in? Um, from this distance, it looks like a simple wooden bridge. Um, you, can get, you can get closer and really check it out. Okay. So Ellery kind of moves up, looking at the bridge. Simple make, nothing fancy. Logs with a few planks on there. Doesn't arch at all, just a straight bridge. Old wood weathered. Um, and I'd kind of like to look past the bridge because bridges seem like good ambush spots and see if I see any signs of people or movement on the other side. Sure. Give me a perception check. That's, uh, 16. Okay. So looking out in the distance, you see the trail continues a few, a marker on the other side, um, a stone marker. More willow trees, more marsh. You don't really see any anything. As the rest of you are kind of moving up to begin to cross the bridge, uh, Ball, you see air bubbles coming up to the water. I think I'll pick someone closest to me and just get the direction, like get them to look in that direction. Okay. Who do you grab? Um, I don't know who's near me. The rest um, of you all are all kind of clustered together, so your choice. Let's say I'm beside Vesper, and I'll just kind of okay. Like tap you, her and point her in my direction, or in the direction you, of the bubbles. You tap and point in that direction, and as you both see these bubbles coming up, and suddenly there's a <laughs> lurching out of the water. You see a humanoid form jumping up towards the bridge, grabbing the edge of the bridge, and pulling themselves up, grabbing at the cloth of Ellery, who's standing on the bridge, and begins to pull. Um, at this point, everyone give me a initiative. A... Oh. Ouch. Uh, do we want to take a break while we're rolling initiative? Yeah. After you guys roll initiative, uh, take a break. We'll be back at 9.35. Does that work for you guys? Okay. So 15 minutes after you roll initiative. Next time on Back to the Story. As Ellery, you fall backwards, heads over heel, <laughs> into the water as the water splashes all around. So you reach out, and at this point you can see the silhouette of an entity in this murky water turn, and the only reason you can really see them is because there's a dull reddish light that's kind of emanating from their chest. You feel the pain as the air hits you, and then you feel a second pain. As you look down and you see one of the snakes that makes up the handle is now bitten into your hand. Uh, Vesper, that brings us to you, and you have to go towards the green one. For part two of this episode of Back to the Story, you can find it on Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, or TuneIn. If you'd like to support the show, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash backtothestory.